Hi, Will Matheson here, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This episode has been brought to you by Cyberlink Power Director. Today we're going to be doing a massive amount of exploring. The magic hammer we got opens up almost the entire world, with the exception of the extreme northeast and southwest of the Dark World. Now don't get too excited, I haven't signed a sponsorship deal yet. I'm just trying out the trial version of Cyberlink Power Director, because I need a new video editor. Because my old setup either stopped working, or I noticed shortcomings that could not be overcome. And I'll talk more about that as I'm walking between places. So back to Link to the Past. You have options at this point for what dungeon you want to do next. Here are the basic rules based on what item you get from each. You have to do number, and I'll put these in the video description. You have to do number one first. One gets you two, three, and four. Four gets you five and six. Four also gets you into seven, but you need six to get anywhere and three to finish it. Number two makes six easier to enter, but it's not a requirement. Three makes five easier, but it is not a 100% absolute requirement, but you would still be crazy. And number six makes number five easier, I know, right? But you can manage. And I'll post this information in the video description. My personal preference is probably 1426357, but for the sake of simplicity, and since most people will be inclined to go in numerical order, I will go in numerical order. However, I will show you how to play 6 without 2, and hypothetically 5 without 3, and definitely, uh, definitely 5 without 6. And now it's time to get a whole bunch of stuff. You can now get all three medallions, a whopping great seven heart pieces, here's one of them now, and two new ways of protecting yourself are now available, as well as a whole new way of getting around. And if that's not enough, we'll double our capacity of an important thing, and I don't mean bombs and arrows, but I'm going to max out those too. And if there's something I'm forgetting, please let me know and I'll show it as soon as I can. You'll know you're finished maxing out arrows or bombs, as the case may be, when she gives you back your rupees. And when she does that, switch to maxing out the other one, if you have any money left. I had a little bit of money, I got a few more bombs. Anyway, I'd been using Windows Movie Maker 2.6, the one that came with Windows XP Media Center Edition, for years. It has a timeline view, which is an absolute necessity. I can't believe they removed that feature for the Vista and later editions. And frame-by-frame -frame access, sort of, and a narration mode. And even though it's temperamental by today's standards, I've gotten a lot of use out of it, and I was loath to switch. But there are three basic problems with Windows Movie Maker. There's no HD capability, it only supports a sim single video track, and major, major sound problems. It, it only supports one additional audio track, but the real deal breaker is simply quality. Many sources that sound fine when you play them in a media player, or even Windows Movie Maker's own collection window, instantly sound like crap when you put them on the timeline and they don't get any better when you export the finished movie. And I had the misfortune of really noticing this for the first time, and I tried and tried to fix or work around the problem, but nothing worked, so I decided it was time to switch. So I said all that to say that I, I wish Microsoft would put out an updated and modestly more capable Windows Movie Maker, because they do have a way of blending power and ease of use, and they could make an editor that millions of people could use for their little hobby projects. So this around here, this is uh, dungeon number two, and uh, we'll be getting to that next time. Anyway, the first alternative editor I tried was Lightworks. Unfortunately, it won't work, at least not out of the box, with the free software codecs that my gameplay videos are encoded in. The first alternative editor I tried was Lightworks. Unfortunately, it won't work, at least not out of the box, with the free software codecs that my gameplay videos are encoded in. It, in the interest of simplicity and speed, they like to work with a limited standard range of professional codecs. Shotcut seemed promising, but it lacked narration mode. Open Shot might have been an option, because it's been thoroughly updated, but I'm not ready to test it yet. It was extremely crashy the last time I tried it. And here we get the Bombos Medallion, which is very useful. It will, uh... 
It's basically a fire-based attack that hits all enemies. Very useful. Camtasia looked fancy, but was slow and crash-happy on my machine. Videopad had a no-nonsense feel that I would ordinarily be charmed with, but it was incredibly slow to do anything on my machine. So now I'm trying Cyberlink Power Director. So back up at where Link's house used to be, it's now not Link's house anymore. Well, I suppose it's still Link's house in the light world. Anyway, so this is where you can get 30 bombs for just 100 rupees, which is good if you're impatient and want to reload your bombs quickly. I suppose I could have used that fairy. And some of these trees can talk. Okay. So those are one-eyed giants. They were roaming the field of rocks on the east side of the pyramid. There were some on the south side of the pyramid, too. Let's see what you have to say. Hey, how's it going? Alright. Yeah, how about you? How are you today? Oh, alright. It's funny that even the friendly trees spit a bomb out at you. Like, I, I just wonder what they were thinking where, like, you know, like, you'd think the friendly trees might, like, you know, give you a heart piece or something. You know? I, I don't mean a heart piece, I mean, like, a, a heart refill, you know? Or maybe a couple of rupees or something, you know? Just some nice, not, you know, a bomb that's trying to kill us. And then they'll be like, wow, I haven't seen a normal person in a few hundred years. Let's have a chat. Oh, sorry, I tried to kill you. <laughs> okay, I screwed up here. I meant to go back in the magic mirror portal that I'd left on the top of the hill. So now I've got to find another way back into the dark world. So I might as well show you the original portal, the first one that you have access to. And this one you can get to as soon as you have your, after you have your first, after you have your encounter with Ogmenim. This video is also a process of exploring different techniques and settings. I've just installed a audio mixer called Voice Meter and I'm just starting to use it right now. I mean, right this minute. So, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, does this sound better than the beginning or whatever? And you can tell I'm a sound guy, because I know all the technical terms. Okay, so let's... Okay. Yeah, you can defeat those guys with a bomb. That's good. Good to know. Thanks very much for watching along with me as I get my feet wet. It's important to... make a path here so that the enemies can't follow you, so I recommend a zigzag. Okay, I'm just fooling around. I don't really mean that. So let's continue to explore. We'll dash right back to where we left off, if we can get around these pigs with spears. Hopefully you put it in a box or something. Yeah, sure, I'll look for it. Now, in this game, the shovel is not a major item, unlike the next game where you're using it all the time. I guess he's fussy about who he plays for. Alright, well, let's start digging up the flowers. Make a mess of the forest. Oh, look, we got it on the first try. Yeah, the location stays the same every time you play. 
and that actually takes the shovel out of your inventory, so if you wanted to play around with the shovel, don't dig up the flute. see what happened to Kakariko Village in this world. I'm sure it's a nice friendly place, just like in the light world. We'll make lots of new friends. Well, this is interesting. Well, you know, I can never resist a compliment, so let's give, let's take him up on it. Okay, that was just a warm-up shot. Okay, that was just me showing you how dead-on you have to hit it. There we go. That's my first shot. Dead-on. Oh boy, well, you know. Not everybody's perfect. Okay, so let's go see what happened to the maze game. There's probably something interesting there in this world. Okay, now you definitely do want to play that game, but I don't have enough money right now, so I'm going to come back to this. There's lots of rupees in up in the village. But to get there... We'll have to come in through the back until we get some better items. But we can do it. The hammer is enough. Nice to see how much better my swordship has gotten after all these hours of gameplay. I can really feel comfortable and secure walking around anywhere in the world. Hey, what happened to the peaceful- Ah, oh, bees, bees, bees! What happened to the peaceful village music? Man, I need a drink after that. Let's stop at the bar. We just freed a duck. But if you play the flute again, you'll be whisked off to the sky and you can pick a place to land. Like down here in the extreme... Well, there's nothing we can do down there, but it's just to let you... just to show you. Let's go back to where we started. So, like I said, to get to the Dark World equivalent of Kakariko Village, we have to come in from the back. And, as you might have guessed, uh, since our encounter with Agnahim, well, actually, since we, probably since we picked up the Master Sword, actually, uh, everything in the, the village has gotten a lot rougher. You don't get the peaceful music, and there's a whole bunch of soldiers around all the time now, not just when somebody calls for them. There's a full magic decanter available for you if you want to dash into that tree. Could be useful. Okay, and here we 
are on the north side of Kakariko Village. Uh, well, the equivalent in the Dark World. And, uh... wonder what you have to say. Okay. Same to you, buddy. And here we are. Actually, not that much less friendly than Kakariko Village is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the Lost Woods in the Dark World here is called Skull Woods, and Kakariko Village is the Village of Outcasts. This guy, he's just bad news. Um, yeah, you really, you really want to stay away from him. It's, uh, there's nothing you can really do about him, just stay away. Okay, I'm mixing that up. There's uh, one of the portraits you can pull in the light world, and I think you get something. So there's a good 300 clams. It's funny, you know, in such a place that's so dark and suspicious that they just leave so much money lying around. That was another bird statue. A little more sinister than the duck of the light world. And here's another game to play. Yeah, sure. All right, we got one right off. But yeah, that's what you're looking for from this game, the piece of heart. It really took me a few tries. I edited it out. Probably took like six or seven tries, but each try is very quick, so you'll get the piece of heart pretty quickly. Just pick the same chest every time you go in, just to make it quick. There's another one of those robbers, so you can stay away from him. that this guy's got posts up in front of his house and he's running a shop like you know don't you want customers why are you making it difficult for people let's talk to this tree hey oh yeah okay i wonder if it's a duck like a female duck quacking Quacking for help. Well, in this case, I can almost... You know, I mean, they, they had that wall sealed. I had to use a bomb to blow it up. Okay, that's level four right there. That's the that's the entrance to the level four dungeon. And I'd actually recommend doing it right away if you want to, because you get some very useful items, or you get, you know, more accurately, you get the ability to get very useful items. So it's a, and it's not a very hard dungeon either. So, so if you want to do that and you want to play along with me, just skip ahead a few episodes. So there's nothing we can do here yet in the dark world, but if we go in the light world... Well, I don't know if I'd gone in here or not, into that uh, house or not, but I'll show you in a moment. Now we can drop down here. All you have to do here is sprinkle some powder into the bowl. Hey, how's it going? Oh. Oh, well, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, okay. Huh? Uh... Okay. Should I reset? No, don't worry, this is good. What the game actually does is half the cost of everything you can do with magic. So the evil side of the bat was lying to you. It's having the cost, not the power of your spells. 
your magic capacity and the power of your magic recovery items is unchanged. So again, just the cost of everything is now half. So it's kind of like having double magic capacity. Kind of. Okay. Yeah, so you can even upgrade the Master Sword. The Master Sword is not the very final sword in the game. Well, I mean, I suppose the sword itself, maybe, but you can improve it. But now let's go get that treasure field game. In the way, we see a frog dancing in the stones there. Not much we can do about him, because we can't lift those stones. Let's just jump around here. So yeah, this is a one-way a one-way trip out the uh, south end of Village of Outcasts, for now. Well, it's a one-way trip in the Dark World, anyway. Okay, let's do it. Now, you want to just dig in the open spaces. Just get into a straight line and just go. Don't be trying to lift bushes or lift stones. Just get into a nice long line of open spaces so that you dig up as many holes as you possibly can. And the location of what you're looking for changes every time you play, so just keep at it. Just keep digging. Just keep digging. Just keep digging. And hopefully, if we're lucky, hey! Perfect. Okay, and that actually was my first try, so I was lucky there. But you see, I did have to dig, dig and dig and dig and dig. I couldn't, uh, you know, if I had wasted time, I wouldn't have got that heart piece. So don't you waste time either. Okay, now we want to explore the north-central portion of the Dark World, so I'll just meet you up at the top of the Village of Outcasts. Okay, here we are. Now let's exit to the northeast. Just dash along here. And what am I going to do next? Okay, while I'm thinking about that, I'll show you this. head south here, navigate through the trees. This is the Dark World equivalent of where we were dashing to get to the uh, Chris Woolyhan room. Okay. And these guys, I think, are just going to stand back and not bother trying to lob the bomb at them. Okay, you have to hop down through the fences, uh, get into this guy's shop. He's really fussy about his, uh, who he sells to. That's just a regular bee. And on the left there, you notice a red shield for 500 rupees. What a ripoff. Uh, it's much better to just uh, pay 50 rupees for a regular shield from one of the other merchants and then take it to the Waterfall of Wishing for the upgrade for free. But uh, before I knew about the Waterfall of Wishing, I actually was paying him 500 rupees for that upgraded shield, which was not, not good. Anyway, so here we are in the back of the graveyard, and if we pop back into the white world here... We can get in this cave that we couldn't before. Okay, maybe we should have gone up the right side first. Because then I would have gotten a bomb to replace the one I'm going to have to use. Oh well. Well, there we go. Let's see if I can remember not to jump off the ledge this time. Huh, good job. Good job. There's no need to wait until you have the means to move those stones. You can just sneak in through the dark world and uh, dash into the tombstone and obtain the magic cape, which makes you invisible and invincible. So the enemies, not only won't you take damage, but the enemies won't even see you, won't even come after you. So that's very good, but it's very expensive to run. Now let's check 
out the area between Death Mountain and Skull Woods. There's a few things we can get here. Oh, watch out for those guys. They really pack a punch. They hurt you for something like three hearts each. So you could be dead in a hurry. Okay, that just so happens I have the cape. So let's take them up on their offer. Now this is tricky. It looks like you can't get by, but if you're careful... Okay, I guess I wasn't careful. If you really, really hug this wall, just be very careful, you can get by. Okay, but now we do need the cape. Get past this bouncy thing. And we get our piece of harsh. Bravo. Now, remember the lumberjacks in the light world that were sawing that tree? Let's see what's... let's see what's happening now. Let's go back to the light world. After we... Oh yeah, there's another shop where the lumberjacks lived in the light world. Did I show you the inside of the lumberjack's house? Well, I'm gonna show you now. I wasn't silly enough to leave the portal right in front of their door. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, well, not much to see there. A couple free hearts and pots. Better than paying for them in the dark world. Oh, well, they're nowhere to be seen, but they've left the tree alone, so now we can jump in. You load on fairies if you need to. And get yet another piece of harsh. The next place we want to go is the top of Death Mountain in the Dark World. So just bear with me while I go into the Dark World, and remember I can't use the flute here, so I'm gonna go back into the Light World and play the flute. Well, to be more accurate, the point is is that the duck that I need, the duck that I call with the flute, only exists in the Light World. And fortunately, Death Mountain enemies and boulders are just about as annoying as ever. So, some things never change. Ouch. You can dash up these stairs, but it's really not going to save you any time. If anything, I think you actually go slower. Okay. Out of my way. Darn straight. I'm Link. Yeah, sure did. Okay, now we could have gone up here earlier after we'd gotten the Master Sword. Like, immediately after we'd gotten the Master Sword. But... I don't use this thing very often, and it would be a little bit contrary to the plot, I think, to come up here in the middle of everything with the princess getting kidnapped again. So, let's get it now, because we do have to come up here anyway, and here's me figuring out what we're going to do next. Okay, we're going to go back into the dark world, so we just need to hop off the ledge and back into the portal. I think I showed you this earlier, but uh, 
found these guys with the hammer, and now we can get through. And we'll start by using the cape. Now you could also dash through here, but I just find what I end up doing is bashing into those tor torches, so I'd rather just walk. Lift, and in we go. Okay. And we get the cane of Byrna. Byrna? I don't know. Hard to pronounce. And they give you some hearts here, but if you were just walking through without any protection, it really wouldn't be enough. And let's activate the cane, but first we need to reload our magic. So let's use our ma magic medicine. And we'll activate the cane. Now this cane makes you invincible, but not invisible. It costs more to activate than the cape, and it has a little bit of offensive capability equivalent to your basic sword, but it costs less than the cape after you activate it. So depending on the situation, you may want one, you may want the other. But they are kind of similar items. So let's go back to the light world. And I want to get some more magic medicine. Now you could take your empty bottle back up to the Waterfall of Wishing. And that is... the Magic Shop is the closest landing point. So I'm thinking at this point, I think I'm just gonna go in the Magic Shop and just buy more medicine. Because I just don't really want... I really don't want to take the walk up to the Waterfall. Now, if you just want to refill your current magic, one thing you can do is freeze an enemy with, a, with the ice rod and then bash it with the hammer, and that way you, you often get a magic refill. And now that I've done all that game playing, I want to go max out on bombs. So I'm going to head over to the center of Lake Hylia. How can that bird hurt me? From, how, can, how can that bird hurt me just by my swimming under it? That makes no sense. Anyway. Okay, so I'm maxed out on bombs and arrows, and I don't really have anything else to spend money on, so I could start getting potions and things at the magic shop, I guess, but it still, it still kind of makes sense to keep using the fairies. And the fairies also have uh, an advantage that the potions do not, which you, you may see if you lose all your hearts. Anyway, so let's head back over to the area where we'll enter the second dungeon. Of course, then I have to remember, hey, wait, Will, you left behind a portal to the Dark World uh, just a screen or two over. So let's use that instead of having to go up into the northwest corner of the swamp. Okay, and back to the west we go. And here we are. This is the entrance to the second dungeon. All ready to go. Boy, this is both a really long episode and it's taken me forever to make. But there's lots of stuff in between the levels here. But I, it doesn't... this is like by far the most stuff between levels in the game. Anyway, if you still... even after getting 600 rupees in the Village of Outcasts, if you still need more money, there is another one-shot treasure trove we can explo exploit. Well, we'll explore and exploit it. And we'll explode it. Explore, exploit, explode. Kaboom! And even more rupees. But I'm not actually going to save that. I'm just going to leave those rupees. And I discovered that this is not a safe place to stand. You really need to watch out for those guys. 
they like to take your shield. Now, if you kill them immediately after they take your shield, you can get your shield back, but you have to kill them right away. If they take another item after they take your shield, then you're screwed. You have to go get a new shield. Like right now, uh, there's nothing I can do. I'm... Well, I'm not a sitting duck, but uh, it's getting there. Anyway, so that's all for t this. E that's all for this long, long episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. See you next time as we explore Dungeon Number Two.